Hi everyone! Today we're going to read a story from the New Testament, and the New Testament is the part of the Bible that takes place during and after God sent Jesus to us. And Jesus is in this story, and actually Jesus is the one telling this story. Jesus told a lot of stories when he was here, and the reason why he would tell stories is to demonstrate or show to his followers how they should live. So he would these stories weren't necessarily true stories, but he would tell the story to show them something. Have you ever heard a story before that had a lesson? Something that you're supposed to learn from the story about how you should live and treat people? That's the kind of thing Jesus would tell. And these were called parables. And this story um, has a name that adults call it, and that is the story of the Good Samaritan. And you'll see why it's called that once we're done with the story, but right now we're going to call it A Neighbor Shows Kindness. A teacher of the Jewish law came to Jesus with a question. God's law tells me to love God with all my heart, my soul, my strength, and my mind, and to love my neighbor as myself. But who is my neighbor? So Jesus told this story. A man was traveling down a rough and rocky road. Then robbers grabbed him, took his clothes, and beat him. They left him lying on the road. A priest came along the road. A priest is someone who um, works in a church. He saw the hurt man, but he went by on the other side. A temple worker came along the road. He saw the hurt man too, but he went by on the other side. A man from Samaria came along the road. Jews did not like Samaritans, but this Samaritan stopped. He cleaned the hurt man's wounds and put on bandages. Then he took the man to an inn. The Samaritan had to leave the next day, but he used his own money to pay the innkeeper. Look after this man. He said to the innkeeper, if you need more money, I will give it to you when I come back. Then Jesus asked the teacher of the law, which of the three travelers was a neighbor to the hurt man? The one who helped him, said the teacher of the law. Jesus said, go and do the same. So Jesus and a man who was a teacher of the law were talking at the beginning of this story. And what question did the teacher of the law ask Jesus? Yes, Jesus, who is my neighbor? And the teacher of the law was wondering because God tells us to love him, to love him and to love our neighbors. But the teacher of the law was wondering, well, who is my neighbor? And that's why Jesus told this story, to show the man who our neighbor is. What was the bad thing that happened to the man in this story? He was robbed and hurt, right? And he was left in the road. He needed help. That's a very scary place to be in. What man walked by next? Well, next, a priest walked by. Did the priest help the hurt man? No, he didn't. Who was the second man who passed by? The second man was a temple worker. Both priests and temple workers are supposed to know a lot about God. But did the temple worker help 
the hurt man? No, he didn't either. The next man who came by, where was he from? Well, the story says the man was from Samaria. And that's important because in the story, the man who is hurt is a Jew. And Jesus was also a Jew, and he knew a lot about um, Jewish life. And he also knew that the Jews and the people from Samaria didn't always get along. So the man from Samaria probably saw someone who was a Jew, and he thought, this man's a Jew. Jews and Samaritans don't get along. I don't have to help him. Well, that's what makes this story so important. Even though this man was a Samaritan and the hurt man was a Jew, he helped him anyway, even though the Samaritans and the Jews didn't get along. How did this man help? Well, he fixed his wounds and he sent, he placed him into an inn where he could rest up and he paid for the inn himself. Do you think helping the hurt man was easy for him to do? I don't think it was easy because first he had to decide to help him, even though he was a Jew and he was from Samaria and they didn't get along. Then he had to help the man because he was hurt. He had to put on bandages and take him all the way to an inn. So that required a lot of work. And then when they finally got to the inn, the Samaritan man had to pay money. So he did a lot of things to help the hurt man. Do you think God helped the man in the story to do the right thing and help the hurt man? I think he did. God wants us to do the right thing and to help others who need it. That is what Jesus calls in this story, being a good neighbor. Even though the Samaritans and the Jews didn't always get along, the Samaritan man decided to be a good neighbor to the hurt man. Even when other people walking by who were also Jews didn't do it. What are some ways that each of us can be a good neighbor to others and help them? Well, just like the Samaritan man in the story, we can look out for others when they need our help. Maybe they're, like the man in this story, hurt or sick, or maybe they're just sad and need a hug or someone to tell them that um, they like them and they um, hope that they'll get better or feel better. Sometimes people just want company, or sometimes people do need a helping hand to get a job done. Are all of these things easy? No, not all of them are easy to do, especially when you don't know someone. The Samaritan man in this story didn't know the hurt man on the road, but he decided to help him anyway because he was really hurting. Do you think God helps you to help others? I think he does. God wants us to treat other people with love and with kindness. And he can, he, Jesus showed us by his example how to do these kinds of things. In fact, Jesus said to the teacher of the law at the end of the story, go and do the same. So Jesus wants us to be like the good Samaritan in this story and to help other people. That's how to be a good neighbor. That's why this story is called The Good Samaritan. Let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for giving us eyes and ears to see and hear the needs of the people around us. Thank you also for giving us strong minds and bodies so that we can help other people. Help us to put off the things we want to do in order to be good neighbors to other people first, even when it's not easy. In Jesus' name, amen. In the story we just read, Jesus told the man of the law that he wants us to be good neighbors to other people. 
If you've heard the word neighbor before, it was probably meaning the people who live nearby you. Neighbor does mean that, but Jesus didn't mean it exactly like that. Jesus told this story to show us that he wants us to be a good neighbor, not just to the people who live near us or who we like, but to everyone, and especially the people who are hurting and need help. Let's imagine a few scenarios or possible things that could happen and think about how you could be a good neighbor in these scenarios. What would you do if your classmate fell down on the playground? How could you be a good neighbor to someone who's fallen down on the playground? Well, first I think you could ask them, are you okay? Maybe they skinned their knee or maybe they just fell and they are okay. But I'm sure either scenario, they'd be happy for you to ask them if they're okay. And they might need help getting up or they might ask you to go tell the teacher if they need help getting up. People like it when you show concern or care for them and ask them if they're okay in situations like these. What would you do if you saw someone struggling to carry something? How could you be a good neighbor to them? Well, maybe you could ask, do you need help? It's always okay to ask people if they need help. They might say no, but they might say yes. If you saw someone struggling to carry something, they might say, yes, please carry this for me. Doing small things like that is a good way to show someone that you're being a good neighbor to them and that you care about them. What would you do if your friend left their toy at your house? Would you keep the toy? Jesus wants us to be a good neighbor, and I think that keeping the toy wouldn't be the best way of doing that. You should think about how your friend would feel in that situation. They're probably missing their toy and wondering where it is. So then you can say to your friend, you left your toy at my house. And they can come get it or you can get it back to them. That's a way to be a good friend to someone. What would you do if you were playing a game with a lot of people, but you saw someone off to the side standing alone? Why do you think that person might be standing alone? Well, maybe they don't know anyone there and they don't wanna join in if they don't know anyone. Or maybe they don't know how to play the game and they just need someone to explain to them how they can join in. If you notice something like that, a way of being a good neighbor is saying to that person, hi, my name is Elizabeth. Would you like to play this game with us? Doing that is a good way to show someone that you care about them and want to be a good neighbor to them. What would you do if you are eating lunch and you see someone sitting alone? Well, this is kind of a, a similar thing. You can say hi and introduce yourself to them and ask them if they want to sit with you. These are easy things we can do to show other people that we're being a good neighbor. For today's craft, you're going to need a Band-Aid. What do you use Band-Aids for? Band-Aids are for boo-boos and hurts, and they help them to get better. In this story, the man who was hurt was bandaged by the Samaritan man to help him get better, just like using Band-Aids. Today we're going to make a card with a Band-Aid person on the front of it. This one that I made, made already is a thank you card and it says, thank you for being a good Samaritan. And inside of it, I wrote a letter to someone who is very nice and helpful to me, and I said, 
Thank you for always helping me when I need help. I could have also made a card that, that told someone I'm here for them to help them if they ever need my help. And that's the card that I'm going to make now. Both types of cards, a thank you card or a card telling someone that you care about them, both of those are ways to be a good neighbor. Think about the people that you know. Is there anyone you want to say thank you to or anyone you want to tell that you're there for them and you love them? You can make a card for them. Let's begin. All you need at first is just a sheet of paper. It can be any color, but lighter colors are probably better so that any writing on it can show up and I'm going to fold it in half in order to make a card. Now on the front of the card is where I'm going to make my Band-Aid person. So I have my Band-Aid and you might need some help with this. I'm using a Band-Aid that doesn't have any pictures on it because that is easier to make into a person. And just go to about the center of the card and stick your band aid onto the card. Now I'm going to turn my band aid into a person. I made my band-aid person with two arms and two legs and a happy face because they're a good Samaritan and so they're being happy and kind. If you don't have a band-aid without pictures on it, um, that will make it more difficult to make a band-aid person. But one thing that you could do is possibly use uh, four band-aids or so and make a heart out of your band-aids to put on the front of your card. Now all you have to do is finish decorating your card and inside of it, write a note to someone. Just like I did on this one. In here. Your Band-Aid person on your card can remind you of how you should help others. And I hope your happy Band-Aid person will cheer up the person that you give your card to. Giving someone a card just like this is a good way to remind them that you love them and that God loves them. Cards are a good way to show love. God wants us to be a good neighbor because he wants us to love other people, no matter what. Maybe they're very different from us, and maybe helping them is hard or loving them is hard. But God wants us to do it anyway because God loves everyone. And he wants us to love other people because we love him. Loving other people is the best way to show other people God's love. The story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus told us is a great example of how to be a good neighbor and show God's love to people no matter what. 